Hello and welcome to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the configuration of Calibri and adding a user and a few pieces of background information. Let's get started. All right. When we left off in the last episode, we had kicked off the downloading of a little bit of information from the Khan Academy channel. And so we've now got that sitting here in the background. Of course, from here, you've got the option to import more. And that is just repeating the same sequence that we went through in the previous video. So it's going to load the channel. You'll be able to select your information that you want to download, the resources, and then kick off the download of that. We're actually going to cancel this because we need to look at a couple of things here. So first, we are still logged in as a super administrator. We want to come over here to the side and we're going to just take a look at a couple of these options. So under facility, you can manage classes. You can add users. So we're going to add just a regular user. So we'll say new user. We're going to call the user Joe Smith. And set a password. Under user type, we've got the options of learner, coach, or admin. And for this user, we're going to leave him as a learner. Okay, so moving across the top, settings. This is just some of the settings. Some of these we set during installation. And of course you can toggle those on and off. And then under data, you can generate log files based on sessions and summaries. And that is in a nutshell what it takes to work with Calibri on the back end. So if we wanted to add a new class, we might say new class and say test one, save that. And if we go into that class, we can assign coaches and we'll assign the admin user as a coach. And then we could enroll learners from here and we have the option of enrolling Joe Smith. Now Joe Smith can also operate as an independent user. So if we go back we can see that the options are pretty simple and straightforward. You do have the options of quizzes and that will let you work with that and you've got plan and you can set up lessons and say lesson one some description and we can continue through And then under options, we can do edit details and set the options that are available. Cancel out here. So at this point, we've done all I wanted to do as the super admin user. So we're going to sign out of that and we will sign in as Joe Smith. And so this shows the resources that are available and we only had the one piece that we downloaded 
from Khan Academy, different pieces that we downloaded from Khan Academy. And you can just dive into this and go into the lesson. And that will let you play the video, which I'm not going to play too much of because of YouTube rules. So, of course, when we back out of this, we really only did one category when we selected it last night in the when we selected it in the previous video. And so the reason the other two categories are there is because there are tags on them and they are related in some way. But we can dig down into this and look at Mesopotamia and have some fun with this. This is a little quiz and I honestly have no idea. Greek uh, name Mesopotamia comes from the Greek and means between two rivers. Which are the two rivers referenced in the name? Um, that is a great question. I'm going to go with B. Let's see. Can we use a hint? Flooding regions of the Nile created a relatively thin green belt. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep going with that. And it lets you do little quizzes. So, all in all, this is a great resource. I'm going to pause the video here. And I'm going to come back and we're going to look at another install of Calibri I've got. Where I've got more resources downloaded already. So hold on just a moment. We'll be right back. Alright, we're in my other instance of Calibri. And we are going to just check out the Learn area and as you can see I've got more information more more channels of information installed on here so if we go into open stacks we've got different options we can go into humanities and US history and just drill down in chapter one and so we've got a history book all online ready to be used. We can go full screen and increase the size of the page. And so we've got again our different options here. We can take a look at facility users and again we've got Joe over here and we've got our second super admin that I had not remembered the name of so yeah pretty simple system to get going with I absolutely see the value of this from multiple angles. Not only for correctional facilities, but returning citizens that might be on parole. You've got places that still don't have great internet access in and outside of the US. You've got homeschoolers that may not want their kids to have internet access but still need to have access to a lot of this information and 
of course, libraries and different resources like that that you might see a use for this type of software. So the one, the one thing that I would like to see is to have, and maybe we can do this. Let's, let's, let's try something here. I want to sign out and where this gets interesting is explore without account. So you can still come in here and view resources and it's not going to track all of the things that you're doing as if you were in a classroom situation. So you can still come on here and say you wanted the sales forecast spreadsheet template. You can still grab that and we can open it with LibreOffice and we've got that spreadsheet that we just downloaded from Calibri. So this can be extremely useful because you've got different laws in place to protect student information for students that are under the age of 18, at least in the U.S. And by allowing them to explore the resources without having to create an account, and you could get a, around this by disabling the ability for users to create accounts. Lock that down as an admin only activity and you are more or less forcing people to use the resources as guest, which may not always be what you want, but there are use cases where that is actually the best solution to the problem. You're not collecting any information from the student. You're not saving any information from the student. And so you've got at least plausible deniability on your side. And so with that thought, that'll bring us to the end of another practical IT video and the end of the 2020 version of my Calibri series. If you haven't taken a moment to do so already, I'd invite you to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you once again for your support. Have a great day.